Hello viewers. So today we are going to discuss about one very important vitamin which is useful for us and that is vitamin B12. So vitamin B12 is a water soluble vitamin which uh, is helpful for good health of nerves, blood and the skin mainly. And then if you look at you know what are the problems that can happen with deficiency of vitamin B12. So I will list out few of the issues which is mainly with the nervous system. So almost all parts of nervous system can be affected with deficiency of vitamin B12. And right from if you look at brain, then you know one of the common causes of dementia, it can be vitamin B12 deficiency and it can affect younger people also. So if you see a person who's you know young and no other cause of dementia, you must rule out uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. So they have memory impairment and they also have loss of other brain functions. Then sometimes optic atrophy and vision problems can happen. Recently I have seen patients who have deafness and hearing problem also due to vitamin B12 deficiency and then imbalance while walking. But the commonest symptom of B12 deficiency is in the nerves is the peripheral neuropathy and they get tingling, burning and numbness of both the feet. And if left untreated, these symptoms can ascend up to the knees and also they can affect the hands. Along with that, if you see these patients, they can also have this discoloration or the hyperpigmentation of the knuckles and sometimes the lips and the tongue and inside the mucosa also. So if you have someone who has this tingling numbness of the feet or mild forgetfulness and with the skin changes, always think of vitamin B12 deficiency. A lot of psychiatric symptoms also can happen. So a person may develop, you know, psychosis, can have aggression in his behavior can start uh, you know forgetting and also have depressive symptoms so almost all kinds of neuropsychiatric manifestations can be commonly seen due to vitamin b12 deficiency and the best thing is that if we can diagnose it early most of these things can get better over time if you look at the second other system is which gets affected due to deficiency of vitamin b12 and that is blood so it causes deficiency of or reduction in the hemoglobin causing anemia and that is called as vitamin b12 deficiency anemia and that is one of the common causes of anemia other than what we see which is iron deficiency anemia and skin changes I have already mentioned. So as you can see there are many serious and disabling problems which can happen due to deficiency of between B12. So it is important to diagnose and for anything in neurology as I said clinical symptoms are important. So if someone has any of the symptoms that I described suspect between B12 deficiency and then with a simple blood test which can be routinely tested in almost all the labs between B12 deficiency can be diagnosed and uh, the normal reference ranges are given so it ranges from say little more than 200 up to 900 and then if uh, someone has even with the lower limit of the normal it could be a sign of deficiency so it should be in the middle range or even more than that so it, it should be like more than 500 you know levels which is good for us and anything less than that can be a sign of deficiency there are a few other markers also like some people may have anemia, hemoglobin may be less and other one is called as MCV, mean corpuscular volume which can be increased and uh, other uh, parameter in the blood called homocysteine which can be elevated in many of these people and then in uh, this deficiency is more common in vegetarians because in most of the vegetarian foods the amount of B12 is not good enough to sustain you know or what is required to fulfill our daily needs. Uh, but even non-vegetarians can also develop vitamin B12 deficiency. So and that is because in the gut the absorption is not good and that can happen if there are antibodies in the gut against anti there is called anti intrinsic factor or anti parietal cell antibodies. So if a non-vegetarian person also has deficiency of B12 then these antibodies should be tested and sometimes there can be problem in the stomach called as atrophic gastritis which can be diagnosed by, a, by endoscopy and then biopsy can be taken to confirm the diagnosis. So these are required if you know if you need to confirm the root cause of B12 deficiency in a person and somebody who has undergone surgery for the intestines or the stomach again this uh, B12 deficiency can be there. So these are some of the known causes or and somebody who is taking metformin you know few drugs also can cause deficiency of vitamin B12. So now that we have diagnosed then the question comes how to treat. So there are uh, tablets also available in the market and we have injections also. So for most people tablets may be enough especially if the deficiency is mild or the symptoms are mild. 
but suppose if the deficiency is severe i see many patients who have very severe deficiency of b12 where the levels may be below 50 or below 100 in such cases to build up the levels rapidly injections may be needed and they are usually intramuscular injections of methylcobalamin which is usually 500 micrograms dose and the doctors will suggest you or tell you what dose is required so initially it's given for daily for few days and then it can be made weekly uh, till the patients clinically get better and uh, you know and they start feeling better and then the maintenance can be done with the help of tablets but if the symptoms are mild and if the deficiency of b12 is also mild then oral tablets are sufficient and again the duration and the dose can be decided by your doctor so and it's easy to treat so important thing is if we start the treatment early then uh, a patient can recover to a great extent but suppose several months or years pass before it is diagnosed then the recovery may be incomplete or partial so it is important to diagnose vitamin b12 deficiency early and start the treatment early this can affect anyone at any age both genders can be affected but extremes of ages like say very small uh, babies or elderly they may be more prone so uh, an infant or a neonate who's a newborn baby or in the early infancy who is only breastfed and the mother is a pure or strict vegetarian such child also has a very high risk of getting vitamin b12 deficiency and we have seen patients where a child has brain atrophy or brain shrinkage in very early age at the few months of age and when you treat them with vitamin b12 supplements then they recover with their brain growth also and we can prevent uh, dementia in a small uh, child also so what i want to summarize is that you know vitamin b12 deficiency in, in our country is common because there are many strict vegetarians at the same time even those who are non vegetarians they have very less intake of uh, meat or the eggs which is not enough for uh, supplying enough vitamin b12 for vegetarians who uh, consume dairy some amount of b12 can be given but it's again it may not be enough to fulfill the daily needs and those who don't consume uh, dairy for them there is no source left so they need to be on supplements if uh, su if somebody has started taking vitamin b12 supplements then immediately while on supplements don't do the blood test because that may be showing falsely high so if you want to check the efficacy at least you know give a 2 to 3 weeks gap from the last dose of vitamin b12 tablet or injection and then only do the blood test so that will give a more uh, true picture so these are some of the things i wanted to highlight and i hope uh, you have learned few things and you may be having some uh, comments or queries to make please post in the comments like this video and share for greater reach and subscribe to this channel for uh, you know watching more similar videos in the future thank you